Tony, tell us something about your uh, collection and how, its origins. Well, basically, what had happened, um, I used to work at Ford. I used to work for Ford Motor Company or Linus Motors in days as a motor mechanic, and um, I thought one day I'd like to collect, keep some of these cars that I that I've got around me now, so I can turn around and um, and put a collection together over a number of years. So I thought I'll um, I'll start collecting them. So basically, I started about 20, 25 years ago, putting. Um, Putting, building, uh, putting a building together so I could start storing some cars. So as I came across a certain GT or uh, a Fairlane or something that I thought was a bit rare or hard to find or a good quality one, I would turn around and, um, and try and acquire it. And it's taken me basically 20 to 25 years to get to the stage where we're at now. And uh, now we've run out of room, so I've got to put another building alongside this one to uh, further uh, enhance the, uh, the collection. Thank you. What about taking us inside? We'll have a look around. Yeah, sure, fine. This particular car, I lived down at Falcon Beach in uh, Perth, Western Australia, and um, it's quite amazing really because I was sitting on the front rand and um, I've got a small shopping centre over the road and I spotted the guy walk into the deli and I thought, wow, what a car, I haven't seen one of these for a long time and this is about 18 years ago that we got this one. Um, actually it wasn't, it was 14 years ago. And what had happened, I, I fronted him and I said, look, do you want to sell your car? And he said, no, I brought the car in here, it stays in the family, it won't be going anywhere and it's not for sale. And I said, well, I'd like it for a museum one day, would you please let me have it? I'll pay you whatever you wish as a fair figure and uh, I'd like it for a museum. If you're looking after your car that well, you know, one day you might want to sell it to me. So I gave him a business card and I never heard from him for about three to four years. And about four years later, his wife rang up and uh, rang on the number that was on the card. And she said to me, my husband's passed away. And he said, when he passed away, because I haven't got a driver's license, he, I had to sell this car to you because you've got a car collection that you're putting together for a museum. So I said to her, fine, what would you like for the car? And she said, well, to be fair with you, she said, I've rung the Ford dealer here, the local manager uh, Ford dealer, and I've asked him to come and have a look at it and do a valuation on it, and he suggested $2,000. So I said, well, are you happy at $2,000 or would you like more? And she said, no, I'm more than happy at $2,000. So I said to her, well, I'll get some cash together. I'll send a tow truck down and get you to sign some papers and um, it'll be going into the museum as soon as it comes back to Midland, I said, it'll be going straight to the museum and if it, if it needs a little bit of tidying up, I'll get it done. And um, that's how I've acquired this car here. Being a 1960XK, it's a very rare car, I thought, because I worked on these when they were new. I started, it, I, I started working at Ford when, they, uh, when they, these cars were basically new. So I thought uh, it would be a good one to have in my collection.
ask you about this Ford anniversary. Right, I, I brought the car in. Um, I, was, I was over at a uh, Sidebell V8 convention over in Brisbane and I was talking to the people there and I showed them my um, collection of cars in my photo album and I said to them I was looking for any odd uh, strange cars or collectible Ford cars if anyone had anything for sale. And one of the fellas popped his head up at the uh, meeting and said, look, I've got a 53 anniversary out there. My father has just turned around and passed away who had a 54. I'm keeping that because that's only done 40,000 miles and still he's kept it as new. He lived over in Moggle Island. Uh, to get to Moggle Island from Brisbane, you've got to go north and you get on a ferry and you get across that way. So he said to me, if you'd like, come over and have a look at it tomorrow and um, if it's going to a museum, I'll sell it. He said, you know, if it's going to a home, he said, I can see you'll respect it. So I went over there the following day and um, had a look at it, drove it and uh, here she is. She's come back to Perth and um, I've sent him photos of it parked here in the museum, and which he's appreciating, he said, and uh, he's retired now. He was a, a policeman for 37 years in Brisbane. and he was driving it and he told me it was his street car and I didn't believe him. The fellow was in his 80s. I said to him, why do you... Um... I asked him if he wanted to sell it, obviously, and he told me, no, he only wanted to sell the parts on the back of it. And I said to him, well, look, I'd really love the car for the museum, being an original car, and you'd just driven over from Adelaide Springs, you'd driven it over to come here to see his son in, in Bakers Hill. So I said to him, look, I'd really love to have this vehicle, and he, no way in the world he wanted to sell it. So I said to him, well, what are you going to do with it? And he said, well, when I, get, when I die, he said, I want, he said, I, um, I want to be buried with the car. And I said, well, it'll never happen. I said, do you have any kids? And he says, yes, I've got a boy and a girl. So I said to him, I guarantee you, if you ask your kids tonight when you get home, what they're going to do with your car, they'll sell it to somebody who will turn around and put a V8 or something in it. He'll do spinnies up and down the middle of Baker's Hill in the main street, I said, and that's what will happen to your car. And he laughed his head off at the time and I said to him, look, I'll give you $10,000 for it. And he said, oh, he said, I still don't want to sell it, but thanks very much. I said, well, please take my business card and I, you know, if ever you decide to sell it in later years or you change your mind, please let me know. <coughs> On the Monday afternoon, I got a phone call from him and he said, Mr. Butler or whatever his name was, I can't remember at the moment, um, he said, Will you still pay me $10,000 from a ute? And I says, of course I will. I said, what happened? He says, I asked my son what he was going to do with my car and I've told him that it has to be buried with me. He said, and the first thing he said to me was, I'm going to sell it to the first idiot that comes along here in Baker's Hill who'll put a V8 in and he'll do spinnies up and down the main street. Yeah. So in turn, uh, I managed to get it off him and uh, here she is now. I've left it original as, it, as I got it off him, except for the wheels, he had them painted a lovely yellow ochre. I couldn't handle the yellow colour on the wheels. I said to him, do you mind if I change them to green? He said, oh, they were green originally, but I didn't like green. He said, I like the yellow. I said, fine.
tell us about this most unusual, interesting, original car. Yeah, it's a bit of a stunner, isn't it? It's, it's coming up in uh, wild violet, this one. It's a pretty rare colour, pretty rare car, actually. It's a manual one with a sunroof. It was built on the uh, ninth month of 71. The same assembly line that they built the Phase 3 GTs, this is one of the ones that was built on the same assembly line. There were two sold uh, that month. One went to Brisbane, one went to Sydney, and this is a Sydney car. It came over to, West, to Perth, Western Australia in 73. And uh, up until 83, the fellow that owned it passed away and they put it in the shed then. So I've left the license sticker on it to show people that um, it had been parked up in, since then. About a week or so ago, we put it over the pits and licensed it, and um, here it is. And it's been sitting in a garage about two miles from my home in Perth. That's and right. Never told me Believe it or not, we only found out about it four weeks ago ourselves. So what's its future? The owner was going to turn around, or the family that owned it still was still arguing we were going to put it into an auction, and we managed to find out where it was before the people submitted it to the auction, and offered them more money than what the auction suggested it was worth. And hence, here's the vehicle. And tomorrow, what will you do with the car? It'll stay a barn fine, this one here, as far as I'm concerned. We'll just wash it. It hasn't been cleaned. It hasn't had nothing. We'll put the other bonnet back on it. But had a small dent. We've had it repaired. This is just a temporary bonnet to license it. And uh, we'll leave it as it is and leave it in the museum. And we enjoy coming out to see when we do. Thanks, Tony, for joining us again. You're welcome.